It's time. Time to get credit for the work you've done. Time to get the recognition you deserve. With Purdue Global, you can move forward in your career, for your family, and for yourself. You're worth the investment in yourself to earn a degree you're proud of, a degree that employers will respect. Purdue's online university is designed to support working adults like you who know it's never too late to accomplish your goals. It's never too late to make a comeback. It's time to start yours today at purdueglobal.edu. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Episode 14, paying off $133,000 in debt with Debt Free and Sunny CA. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Hello, Frugal Friends. I am Jen. This is Jill. And we are your Frugal Friends, co-hosts of the Frugal Friends Podcast, where we help you save money, spend less, and live more richly. And we are so stoked to have another guest on. We loved having Joel on the last time. And so we really wanted to bring somebody else on. And uh, I'm really excited. How are you feeling, Jill? Um, I'm really excited. That is a lot of stinking money to pay off. And so I'm really excited to hear about her story, how she did it, and gain some more tips because we don't know it all. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Yes. But first, tell me who today's episode's brought to us by, Jill. Oh, I'm going to tell you. We've got a great sponsor today. This episode is brought to you by Doing It Yourself. Woo. That's right. DIY. Did a button just fall off your shirt and you don't want to pay a seamstress to put it back on? Do it yourself. Do you hate the color bagel on your walls, but you don't want to pay a painter to come in and roll some fresh, crisp paint? Do it yourself. Did your 15-year-old computer just crash and burn and die, but you don't want to take it to a store to try and figure out if it's just a minor thing that you can fix, even though it crashed and burned and died? Do it yourself. Anything, any problem that you run into... It's possible that you could do it yourself. DIY that thing. Oh, DIY makes some hefty claims, Jill. <laughs> the last one sounded a little personal. Uh, but you know what's not? Listen, I am doing it myself on my <laughs> laptop, tablet, and phone combined. You have... This episode brought to you by three different electronics. I am. I wish that I was a fly on the wall in your life right now. I should. If I had an extra phone to take a picture of this setup, I might try and figure that out. You would, but you can't because you're using it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's not complicated and that you don't have to do yourself? Podcast editing. Because this episode's also brought to you by podcastcrafter.com. Mm. Uh, not everybody can be a savvy podcast editor or music maker. So if you need some help on your podcast, check out podcastcrafter.com for a free consultation and very affordable podcast editing and mixing. Oh, well. Beautiful stuff. Great sponsors. Mine was not as interesting as yours, but. (laughs) But practical. Practical, for sure. Uh, So we've got a really great interview with you today. And, uh, well, with our friend Amanda today, and we're bringing it to you. Uh, So pull up a chair, uh, buckle yourself in your car, uh, and and get ready. Buckle up. Click it or ticket. (laughs) Click it or ticket. Uh, Today, we have Amanda, better known as Debt Free in Sunny California, on Instagram and YouTube. 
Um, Amanda and her husband paid off $133,763 of debt. It's so much, I literally cannot say it. (laughs) I don't know how much that is, y'all. So they paid it off in 43 months and became debt-free just a few short weeks ago on July 5th, 2018. (gasps) So Uh, exciting. And during that time, she also started the debt-free community on Instagram that's become a safe haven for people paying off debt. Welcome to the Frugal Friends podcast, Amanda. Thank you. I'm glad to be on the the podcast. Yeah, we're excited to have you. That is a lot of money and had to require a lot of diligence and tenacity. Like when Jen told me that she got you to come on this podcast and I was reading a little bit more about you, I was just like in awe of what you've done, what you've been able to accomplish in such a short amount of time. Uh, So one of the things that I'm curious about, what kind of debt was it that you paid off? The, The biggest one was my student loans. We paid off Josh's truck I ended up selling a Prius that I had that was too expensive for me. I couldn't afford the payment after I graduated. Credit cards, and then I had to take out a personal loan to pay the difference on the Mm. car that I sold. Man, what was your degree in? My degree is in cybersecurity. Ooh, I love that. Is that what you do now? It is, yeah. It's a fun, interesting field, kind of like a little detective, cyber detective. (laughs) That's crazy. I have a friend that lives in Boston who like hacks into su- hacks into things like professionally to test the security mm-hmm. and he hacked yep. into I think it was like a Amazon Alexa or something and he like made the news. That's awesome. <laughs> and that's why yeah. I won't be getting an Alexa. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. I do have one. I thought I never would. I thought I thought I didn't want people to know what was going on in my life. And then I realized, have at it. There's nothing much going on over <laughs> Nothing here. happens in my life. You'll Please learn about come. frugal living if you listen in. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've, I, nothing goes on in my life either, but I still feel like I should have something, some secrets. I don't know. You decide. <laughs> um, so, like... You talked about like the things that you have paid off. So that is six figures of debt, which I'm sure obviously a lot of little things adding up over time made, you know, the difference. But like, what was the one thing that you would say made the biggest dent in the debt payoff? That's a tough one. The biggest dent. I, for me, before, so Josh and I started our debt snowballs differently or separately. We weren't married at the time. And so I kind of break it down into two different sections before we were married and after we were married. And before we were married, it was a tough time because I was trying to make it alone in California with my expensive car payment, my student loans coming up. And I hadn't gotten that big raise yet. You know, when you graduate, you think, oh, I'm going to start making so much money. It didn't happen right away. It happened gradually over time. Mm. And so the biggest thing for me was selling that Prius. I had a $433 car payment. And once I got rid of that, it freed up so much money to be able to start paying on my student loans down before paying them down before they even became due. Wow. That was something that I had commented to Jen prior before we even started recording that stood out to me in reading a little bit about your story is that it's almost like you arrived at this place of being willing to sell your car and get something less expensive. And it, it didn't seem to me like this ripping a bandaid off, like I have to do this, like grin and bear it, like knuckle down. It was almost like <laughs> through your journey, you came to this place of, Oh, I realized that this is more important to me than, than having a really cool car, even though like, it sounds like it was a really cool <laughs> car, <laughs> but yeah. How, how long did, would you say like it took you to get to that place? Like what, was it easy? Was it fast? Or, or was that a journey? That's exactly what it was coming to that point of realization. It took me about eight months to get to that point because with the car payment and what I was making at the time, it was only a couple hundred extra that I was able to pay to get the car down. And it wasn't moving the needle fast enough. I started to get mad and get, get mad and more frustrated that I wasn't making the progress that I wanted to. 
And at that point, I realized I would rather get rid of this car and pay off my debt and be free faster than keeping this nice car. Wow. So how long did you end up actually owning the car for? Maybe two years. Okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You got to taste the sweet, sweet nectar. Yeah. The 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 nectar of not having to take my keys out of my purse to open the car. (laughs) Oh my gosh. That sounds like a dream. So uh, what are you driving now? I'm driving a 2005 Honda Civic that has been the greatest little car ever. Okay. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. That's, is that what you drive, Jen? No, I drive a Toyota oh. Corolla. It is <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had yeah. a car payment on that one, too, though. And uh, that was the first thing we, we paid off was that. Even though it was like a low interest rate, it was just so such a low-hanging fruit to pay off that it's like, yeah. why wouldn't we? Yeah. It sounds like you got a really great deal, though, on a 2005 uh, Honda Amanda, where where did you end up purchasing your car from? I found it on Craigslist. They had it listed for $6,000. And when we went to test drive it and negotiate, we didn't even have to do any of the negotiating. The guy <laughs> talked himself down to 5000 Oh, my gosh. The, the tags were expired. And so, yeah, we got it for the price that we wanted without having to wow. negotiate. <laughs> so that was awesome. Good. Was that one of the biggest Craigslist transactions you've done or were you, were you a little bit wary of Craigslist before that or where were you at on that spectrum? I I tend to stay on the safe side, like obviously meet in a public place. Does Mm -hmm. this person seem sketchy? Are they going to just come and like rob me when we have all this money and everything checked out and (laughs) (laughs) during the whole communication process, nothing stood out as a red flag. And so I, obviously brought Josh with me because I'm not going to go with that much money alone. And it yeah. turned out really good. Awesome. Did you, okay, get yeah, the, um, did you get the car checked out before you bought it or anything? I didn't get it checked out professionally. He had all of the records for it. We test cool. drove it and it just, it just looked good to us. Yeah. yeah. We've bought oh, a few cars so on like Craigslist and Facebook marketplace and we have not gotten them like checked out. Um, but just, I mean, Travis knows a little bit about cars and we've never had a problem. So, um, yeah, yeah, we've just have those like red flag detectors and if they go off, then listen to your gut. <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> yeah. To, and take more people, strengthen numbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bring That's all your cool. friends. Good for you. That is a bold move to make, but it sounds like it really did make a difference for your finances and your ability to pay off your debt that fast. Um, one of the things that has stood out to me uh, as well, I read one of your articles about getting your spouse on board. That was so <laughs> interesting to me. Can you tell me a little bit more about what that process was like? What's his level of frugality? He's not frugal at all. And it was, <laughs> it was a process. It took me about a year to get him on board. He, he likes buying things when, when he wants to buy them and he's got a lot of hobbies, which is great, but not for mm-hmm. our budget. And and it it really just took take talking a lot about our why, which is we want to eventually buy a sailboat and just go traveling everywhere. Whoa. Yeah. (laughs) Bombshell. That's amazing. (laughs) Have you guys been boating before? Have you done anything like that? We we have we've been on our honeymoon, we've been on a couple of sailboats. I worked on a cruise ship and then Josh is a avid fisherman, so we're near it, but we, we haven't owned a boat before. That's amazing. And, and, and I love what you said there. And maybe you can expand on that a little bit more. But that starting with the why, mm-hmm. and kind of having that goal in mind. Um, yeah. Can, can you expand on that a little bit yeah. more and then talk about how did you guys both get to the same why? Mm-hmm. Yep. So when you're when you're trying to get your spouse on board, the, the way to not do it is, hey, we're going to cut out all your fun money. You can't do this. You can't buy that. It really has to be an agreement of what do we want to do in the future and what are we willing to sacrifice to get there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. That was how so cool. I got on board when we were paying off our debt. It was, I was totally not having it. Um, but then like we were engaged and we were thinking about our future. And so that was, that was how Travis got me on board to pay off our debt was the why. Mm. And look at you now. You have your own podcast. 
Look at me. I'm talking about Look humanity. At you. So cute with your pink pop filter. Yeah. <laughs> you can't so hear how me did pop. you how did you both come to the place of having the same why? Was that easy? Did that take some conversation? It was already there because we had been watching sailing videos and talking about our dream. We just hadn't flipped it to this is we need to cut out all this debt to get there. Mm-hmm. Have you ever watched Gone with the Winds? I have. I love them. Oh, their their boat awesome. is. I want their boat. <laughs> I didn't know what yeah. that was. And I was like, Jill, isn't it Gone with the Wind? And now <laughs> you both know something that I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Very. Well, they started out RVing. I stumbled across them because my husband and I lived in an RV for a time. And when once we bought it, then obviously we start getting into like, who else is doing this? When you're right. in it, you want to know who else is in the community, you know, similar to this whole debt-free living. Um, yeah. And so that, that's how we stumbled upon them. And then they moved from their RV into a sailboat which yep. is just a whole other animal that looks so fun. Uh, how far off do you think you are from from attaining your why? We'll have a starter boat in the next year. We're not going to go straight for the big catamaran and, and try and quit our job soon. We're going to work into it because it takes a lot to learn how to sail. And we don't want to, we'd rather make mistakes on our small boat instead of the big one. Yeah, that'll be so cool to watch your journey with that. Oh, that's going to make for such wait. a fun like blog, YouTube channel and everything. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. To be able to start from the from the debt part of it to watch you then pay it off and then achieve your why. I don't mm-hmm. think that there's many, many blogs or podcasts that you've seen that whole transformation whole or that. Yeah. yeah, that whole picture, that whole process. Yeah, that's so cool. Amanda, good for you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I always think of the um, whenever I hear about like people starting to like sail, there was a couple that started sailing out of Florida and they had never done it before and they bought their boat and then like several hours later they crashed it into a sandbar and yep. destroyed oh, the oh. boat. Um, <laughs> if I think uh, if I if I'm thinking about the one you're talking about, it, I don't believe they had any sailing lessons and had didn't. very little experience and then they we're sailing at night. So yeah. mistake on top of mistake for that. I know. And everyone in Florida is like, why, how? Cause they were not from Florida. Um, spoiler. Every, we're not totally dumb here. We know, <laughs> we know how to boat. If that's the one thing we know how to do. Uh, yeah. so yeah. When I see people getting out there on boats and like Jill, you guys have one. I'm like, it's like learning how to drive. It's, It's so cool. Uh, Yeah. It's a lot of fun, though. There's nothing like the water. I mean, there's a reason cities are built around water. I mean, it's Mm -hmm. it's sustaining. You know, you need to drink water. But there's also something very life-giving about being on, around, near water. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. That's so true. We know New Year's resolutions often don't stick. In fact, on average, they last around 30 days. So if saving money is on your 2024 resolution list, Here's a foolproof way to stick to yours. Switch your phone provider to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. For those of you paying close to 40 bucks a month for just one phone line, this means a savings of $300 over the course of the year. We especially like Mint because all plans come with unlimited talk and text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash frugal. That's mintmobile.com slash frugal. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash frugal. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So, buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So, how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, 
offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less, like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. oracle.com slash strategic. Um, so along these same lines about of you know, getting your spouse on board to kind of get back to that topic a little bit. You said, Mm -hmm. you know, you're, you were the more frugal one, a little bit more eyes on the prize with paying down debt, but your husband has these hobbies and he knows exactly how to spend money and where he wants to spend money. And, um, I think Jen and I can commiserate with you a bit on that. Um, so for others out there who maybe are, they are really, I, you know, focused on paying down debt, but maybe they've got a partner that isn't in the same place or not quite mm-hmm. as understanding. Are there other tips that you might give to those people on what to do, how to tarry with them in that process, how to get some buy-in for this whole debt payoff goal? Definitely. So definitely the first one would be the start with the why. Second one, don't nag too much. That's a big one. Mm-hmm. For me, for me, it's like when you're trying to get somebody to do, get on board and do something you want to do, you can't approach it with a nagging behavior. It has to be like a teamwork type of thing where we're working together yeah. towards this. Yeah. How do you do that? Like, how do you fight that desire to be like, no, don't do this. <laughs> <I'm not here." laughs> it's so hard. It's so hard. But I think just keeping, keep talking about your why and, mm. and then, um, just making good points and trying not to nag at every little thing and eventually mm. they will catch on. Cause it wasn't, it wasn't a right away thing. It took me a year to get him on board. And f- what the final straw was, was him going through financial peace university with me and seeing it from <sighs> somebody else's perspective. It wasn't me telling him about all this stuff, even right. though I had before mm. it was somebody else pointing out all the reasons why you should do it the way it's laid out. That's amazing. Yeah. The power of the third party. Really? You know, somebody else can say it. And it's Amen. like, that's exactly what I said, but no problem. However, yeah. I get the message. Exactly. You, you just have no, to like step wisdom. back and be like, okay with it and not be like, clenched I told you so. fists. Yeah. 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 You have to like have, have grace and it's um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing that stood out that you had said to um, previously, I think in your article, is showing your own commitment, like you doing the work first before expecting another person to do it. Um, exactly. That, that also really spoke to me. I think that there's great wisdom in that approach as well. I mean, all of these combined, I think, mm-hmm. is a good combination for getting your partner to agree yeah. or have some buy-in. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel like this journey working together on this has kind of like set a foundation for your marriage that you'll take moving forward into other things? Like now that you've kind of grasped marriage, when you're talking about like vacations or something, I don't know, that's a big thing with Travis and I, (laughs) because we have different opinions on what vacations should be like. And so Mm. this has made us like learn compromise and learn Uh. teamwork. Um, And so now that we, we try and make vacations that are like beneficial to both of us which I guess shouldn't be a thing that's hard in marriage you should just be a good human being and compromise with somebody else Mm -hmm. but we had to learn it yeah (laughs) that's definitely helped and especially on on his part when we're looking at stuff like oh we don't need that right now it's not a want it's it's a want not a need Mm -hmm. and other things like buying a boat or buying even buying it looking at houses that we want to buy he's like oh that's too much so it's yeah, it's, it's helped out a lot in other, other areas. That's awesome. I can imagine that, yeah, getting on the same page to accomplish such a massive goal of paying off six figures of debt in such a short amount of time, There, yeah, there's got to be certain teamwork dynamics that you guys have learned that will pave the way for other things that you do in life, in married life together. Um, I think it... Just that speaks to the type of relationship that you guys have, which is amazing to know that like, oh, we set our sights on this and we did it. We may have been in different places at the start, but to have accomplished that, yeah, hats off. Mm -hmm. And for like for waiting for the year that he was like not on board, 
Like I'm yeah. sure that took a lot of patience and just like questioning what you were doing and, and all this stuff. Like, how'd you get through that? Well, I think it was a little bit easier since we weren't married. I had mm. my finances, he mm. had his finances and kind of in order to move forward, he knew where I stood mm. with getting out of debt and stuff. So there was kind of that little, I don't know if you want to call it a carrot or yeah. a bargaining chip <laughs> hanging in front, you know, that's awesome. To help give him, get him on board. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, that will uh that'll definitely whip somebody into shape if they care enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Stand your ground, ladies. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate Yeah, right. I appreciate your transparency in talking about these things in your blog uh and on your YouTube channel. Like you you are open about the fact that it took some time to get him on board and I think that that, that helps me, it helps other people to know that these things take time and we can't expect ourselves to get there in a hot second and much less somebody else who may or may not have the same goals as we do. And so to hear that, that like this took time and it took tarrying with another person, it took compromise, it took long conversations. I think that that brings it back down to reality that this, this wasn't just like an easy snap of the fingers thing for you. Like you had to put work into this. Yeah. and work with another person. Yeah. Yep. And I think that's also what's made like the debt-free community on Instagram like such a popular like hashtag and community and Facebook group because you've been transparent and other people have been transparent and it's just it's a bunch of people like posting to Instagram not their like selfies on vacation but like these yeah. are my goals. This is where I'm failing. This is where I'm succeeding. These are my successes. Mm. Yeah. Um, and we're trying to help normalize talking about money and debt. Yeah. How wow. has, how has the debt-free community like changed your life or your debt-free journey? I I don't think I would have made it this far if I didn't have them, to be honest, because Josh doesn't want to talk about this stuff all the time. And I can only go through Financial Peace University so many times. It's <laughs> so important to have a community of people to talk talk through things and cheer you on when you're not doing so good and, and give you hope and motivation to continue forward. Mm. Yeah, I thought it was so cool when I found it. And because I mean, that I started my blog because of the same reason, like I could, my friends were sick of hearing me talk about personal finance and debt and saving money and like yeah. Travis was getting there and I was like well I better start this blog if if I want to continue being <laughs> married and in the debt-free community wasn't around yet um and so when I found it like near the end of our journey it was just it was so cool to like see all these people because not everybody has like a spouse that they can like bounce this off of and like commiserate with and like mm. this is the group for people to do that um and that's so cool. That was like another thing that inspired like us to start this podcast was that like, well, the debt free community has like a YouTube channel and they have the like Facebook, but like they don't have a dedicated podcast. So we can, we can do this with them in mind. Yeah, definitely. I was just curious a little bit more about your, you know, hashtag debt free community. Mm-hmm. Um, like what, what have you seen come out of that? If you want to talk a little bit about what prompted you to start that Instagram yeah. tag. I think it was 2016. There weren't very many people posting on Instagram actual posts about getting out of debt and what they're doing. You would see, you'd find, you'd follow Dave Ramsey and all these other financial people, but not real everyday people. And so I would look through hashtag Dave Ramsey, debt free and a couple others. And I would just see all those salespeople trying to sell those skinny wraps or skinny teas and they were polluting my feet. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So the debt free community was born out of annoyance really, because I thought, okay, we, the small group of people that there was, we need our own hashtag that way. New people can follow that and then find other accounts. And that's how we can all stay connected and follow each other. That's so cool. I see a positive community that's inspiring others to hop on board and get rid of their debt. I get a ton of messages every day just telling me how thankful they are to have a community like this. 
Mm. for support because either their spouse or their family is not really supportive. So they need somebody else. Mm. And then friendships. So many friendships have blossomed out of this community. Mm. Yes. Yes. I have made several online friends out of this and uh, it's so cool. Like you can have friends like doing you really can have friends that are not intimidated when you talk about personal finance they actually (laughs) want to talk about paying off debt it's so fun yeah that's how Jen and I met (laughs) yeah we connected over paying off debt and living frugally Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah which is cool and and you Amanda have talked about that in your writing and your work just about it being contagious this frugality and, and spilling over. And obviously it spilled over to create a whole community. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, to get back to the topic of your frugality, we did have a question from our Frugal Friends community group on Facebook. And uh, they have dogs and they wanted to know about frugal pet care. And like Jill and I do not have dogs. Jill has a bird named Pequeno. Yeah. Um, but like we, I was really interested to see like how you save on pet care. And cause I know your, your dogs have been to the vet, like, like a lot during this journey. Like it's yeah. not, it's like, can you just like tell us about that? So for saving on them, we found a, an affordable vet in our area that charges so much less than the other areas. So we um, visit them a lot for shots and other medical procedures like removing stuff or if they're sick we go there for uh, for like that I know you asked about the heartworm Mm -hmm. medicine for how to save money on that I don't think that's an area that I would be frugal on I would just continue to take it as prescribed to keep your pets safe yeah have you ever had like any like frugal fails with your pets oh my gosh yes that that same vet (laughs) <laughs> so, uh, Mac, one of my basset hounds, he had a, he had a couple of growths removed and then something else done. They put him under and at like a five days afterwards, he stopped eating completely and we didn't know what was wrong with him. So we kept on taking him back to the vet. And while the vet is cheap and affordable, he's not a very good people person or communicating what's wrong with your pet. So we often walked away confused And after spending $500 there, we went and got a second opinion. And turns out he just had a bad reaction to the anesthetic. That's why he wasn't eating. And we had wasted all that money trying to figure that out. So that's one of the frugal fails that Mm -hmm. that we tried to get around. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And so every time, like, every time you take them to the vet, is that like a out-of-pocket expense? Or do you have, like, pet insurance or something? Yep, out of pocket. So it would come out of our emergency fund, or if it's if we know we're going to go to the vet, we'll stash some money aside. Okay. Yeah. Any other tips for like saving on pets? Can cut their own nails if they will allow it. I know some <laughs> my dogs they they sound like they're dying when you try to cut their their fingernails, but you oh. could do that. You could do like ear cleanings and bathings at home. Keep all that stuff there, but. I would still go to the vet for the big things. Nice. And what what are your dog's names? Buddy and Mac. Buddy and Mac. Nice. (laughs) And they're both the same type of dog? Yeah, they're both basset hounds. Nice. Oh, my gosh. So, Amanda, this is the part of the show where we take a little break and we like to let loose and... (laughs) We have, and, and it's undeniable. It's unmistakable. It's everybody's it's favorite part. Week. It's the <laughs> bell of the week. That's right. It's time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born, and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died, and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the Bill of the Week. Okay, tell us what your favorite bill is this week. My favorite bill is not having to pay student loans anymore because we paid off two and a half weeks ago. Woohoo! Woo! Uh, That is... How does that feel? Like, how have you been feeling? 
I've been feeling like I want to buy everything because I don't have any debt. <laughs> so true. I think I, it's like I'm still I, in yeah. celebratory mode. I feel that you. That is amazing. I was going to ask, yeah, how have you celebrated? That's so recent. Yeah, what are the things yeah. you have purchased? Stuff that we've needed for the car. Let's see. I did some workout clothes. We went out to dinner with friends to celebrate, did a big old barbecue at the harbor, uh, and then a bunch of workout gear. I think I also got a bunch of workout gear when I (laughs) became different. (laughs) Because I was wearing that is like, not my version of rewarding myself. I was wearing the same <laughs> old you. stuff like for the past for several years, and like I work out at a gym, so like everybody saw me wear the same thing every day, and uh, like between washes, of course. But oh man, right. I went out and I bought it used used stuff, but it was new to me. <laughs> there you go. Stoked about it. That's awesome. That's cool. It's never too late. Never too late to earn a degree. Never too late for a comeback. Between your busy career and taking care of a family, it can feel like there's never a good time to go back to school. But your time is now. Time to start your comeback with Purdue Global. As Purdue's online university for working adults, Purdue Global is dedicated to supporting adults like you who know it's time to earn the recognition you deserve. You have the experience. You have the knowledge. It's time to get credit for the work you've done. You can balance work, family, and everything in between while earning your degree. It's time to move forward in your career, for your family and for yourself, with a degree you're proud of, a degree that employers will recognize and respect. You're worth this investment in yourself to earn a degree you deserve. It's never too late, never too late to go back to school and come back stronger with an education you can trust. Now is the time for your comeback. Start yours today at purdueglobal.edu. We all agree that reducing carbon emissions is a good thing. And once again, Toyota is leading the way. Yeah, we hear a lot about fully electric vehicles in Toyota. They got them with more on the way, I'm telling you. We also know a BEV is not for everyone. Whether it's because of cost, range, or if you're like Ray and you're going to start freaking out, oh no, I can't find a charging station when that battery gets real low. Yeah, plus the raw materials used to manufacture batteries are limited. Enter beyond zero. So Toyota's vision for a carbon neutral future in vehicles and in manufacturing plants too. In the years ahead, trust me, it's happening, baby. The materials used to make just one long range battery for an EV could be used to make batteries for six plug in hybrids or 90 gas electric hybrids. That's why Toyota's position today is electrified, diversified, empowering you to choose how to reduce your own carbon footprint with the vehicle that's right for you, a hybrid plug-in hybrid, or battery EV. So shop, learn more, or get details at toyota.com slash beyond zero. Toyota, let's go places. Vroom, vroom. Um, wow. So in gen- so in total, are, are you fully debt-free now, Amanda? Nothing left? Oh my yep, completely wow. debt-free. Wow. Oh, and how does that feel? It feels amazing. I, I don't think it's fully hidden yet. We have, we've had one paycheck since we became debt free. Okay. I think as more go on and as we see our savings go up, it's going to hit. That yeah. is a great feeling. I, um, I had a personal capital account while we were paying off debt and I never looked at it because it was so depressing. Um, cause it doesn't like track your transactions or budgets or anything. It literally just tracks your net worth. And I had a zero. It wasn't going up. <laughs> no, no. So I was like, why would I look at this? This is so depressing. And now I look at it like once a week because I'm getting ready to hit that like six figure mark for net worth. Nice. I am the most stoked and I am going to celebrate when that day happens. <sighs> you so want to awesome. celebrate by flying me down there? I'm gonna, that yes. sounds like a good way to celebrate i'm gonna celebrate by buying jill a ticket to see yes it. yes you heard it amanda um so if you don't have one of those accounts you should definitely get one and now you can like watch all of your things go up yes granted down granted i will never know well i will not in the near future know what it's like to be completely debt free because we bought our house while we were paying off debt so I still am technically I have debt. So I'm envious that you have that like complete free feeling. But yep, until we buy a house, yeah. <laughs> whenever that's going to be. Yeah, uh, it could be your boat. You never know. Yeah. 
<laughs> she wants to pay it in cash, Jill. Shh. Yeah, sh- you can get there. <laughs> um, so you're working on your emergency fund. What do you see that, like, taking, how long, and, um, like, how did you determine how much you're going to save for that? We're going to do $25,000, and we determine that by taking how much our monthly expenses are, like bare bones minimum. Mm-hmm. And then we added a couple extra thousand because we're going to have a boat right afterwards. So we yeah. just figured Josh likes the nice round number and then we'll still keep like 2000 close by for easy access. That's awesome. And, uh, and I think it's going to, we're probably, we're going to try and have it done by the end of the year. Cool. Yeah. We, um, had a little snafu after we finished paying off our debt because hurricane Irma came through literally. 10 days after we oh paid off our debt. 10 freaking days. 10 days. Um, <laughs> so it was like we hadn't even, like, it hadn't set in, and then we were like taking a tree off our house. Um, <laughs> that's what that you have the like, emergency fund for. Yes. That yes. Exactly. Um, sounds like our truck saga. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I heard that you, <laughs> you had a little truck snafu recently. A few of them. Oh, yes. A few. Um, Whoa, what happened there? So I'll I'll start with accident number one. (laughs) That was back in March, the day before Josh's birthday. And two weeks before we paid it off, somebody rear-ended him and it bent the frame on the back. It was, it's in a section that, that they can unbend it without causing damage to the truck. But that was a big saga. And then on the day that we became debt free, we were going out to breakfast and a 17 year old, she just didn't know how to park, and she uh, she dragged her her car along the side of the truck when, when she was trying to park. <gasps> and then number three happened nine or so days later. He got t-boned by another car, which oh. it didn't. It caused minimal damage for his truck, but her car was messed up. The whole bumper fell off. Oh no! Oh my word! Was this all to the same truck? Yeah. Oh, my, oh my goodness. And then one more thing. You gotta wonder, is it a magnet or what? I know, I know. And then he was driving to Home Depot yesterday and a bird flew in front of his grill and oh poor bird. Oh no. It's like no. <laughs> it's like we just need to sell this truck or get some sage around it. I don't know. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> it's like not even a smart car where you can like apologize because you didn't see it. Like it's a truck. Right, right. <laughs> it doesn't blend in. A couple people have that theory, though. They say since it's gray, it blends in with the road, and you can't really see it. But I don't know. Oh, no, please. <laughs> it was parked. <laughs> if, you lo- if you can't see it, then you should stop driving. <laughs> yeah. That's, like, also Agreed. stuff you only hear about happening in Florida, like, with bad drivers. Right. Um, <laughs> so I'm, like, glad it didn't happen to you in Florida because that would just <laughs> would make me so sad. Um But, like, your insurance has been okay with it, right? You got... Yeah, since we weren't at fault, it hasn't gone up at all. Awesome. But they've been super helpful. We have USAA with with the whole transactions and being the liaison for everything. That's awesome. Any any tips for people going through that same kind of Murphy? Stay strong. It's (laughs) not going to stay along forever. I don't know. I'm... I'm, I'm trying to think of what somebody would want to say to me, but I don't know if I believe it at this point. Right? That's right. fine. That's so fine. <laughs> yeah. Tragedy uh, happens. Yeah. Right. But keep on trucking. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yes. <laughs> That's bumper sticker word. I was just thinking our bumper stickers, keep on trucking, and it's other. Uh, there are a few bumper sticker phrases from this episode I'll think of. We don't actually make mm-hmm. bumper stickers, but I'm I mean, just I keeping... could. I could make a bumper sticker. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, you have that like vinyl press thing. Um, yeah. I just keep a running list of things that I could turn into bumper stickers, but Jill doesn't like bumper stickers. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, I've got a whole a whole thing, a whole rant about bumper stickers. But I mean, listen, if you're gonna make money off of it, go for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Amanda, like, what's next uh, for you uh, and for, like, Debt Free in sunny California or sunny CA, either one? Yep. So for Josh and I, what's next is finishing our baby step three, six, three to six months in an emergency fund. And then we're going to buy our first starter boat. We're going to save for that. It's going to be probably 30-foot sailboat that we'll keep in the harbor close by. Those are our goals. 
for Debt Free and Sunny CA. I'm working on launch, like finishing up my website. I want to launch a store and get some products up there and then just keep on with the YouTube videos and the blogs and really grow that. That's cool. What kind of products are you going to have? I want to do like live like no one else decal, like some decals for cars or anything that you want to place it on. I would like to do bags and stuff like that kind of swag. And then I'm trying to think of a product that I could make once and then just have it, you know, put your effort into it once and then continue to to make revenue from there because that's, that's what will really help us get to our goal of quitting our jobs and going sailing and not having to work full time. (laughs) Mm. Are you hoping that Debt Free and Sunny CA will be the kind of catalyst and like the platform for that to Definitely. Kind of sustain you then while you're, that's great. Yep. Yeah. So I want it to be about, uh, obviously centered around finances and then also travel blogging and showing the whole financial part of that. So that's kind of my end goal there. Yeah. And that's yeah. awesome. Cause I'm so glad that all of your stuff is doing well because some people will start doing this like just to make money and Mm -hmm. it just looks like you started it to just be a space where like people could live fully and where we could all experience this debt-free journey together uh, and people see that. And so like for anybody that wants to start anything that's going to succeed that's it like the human connection is Mm -hmm. priority and so I'm so happy for you thank you Mm. um Jill do you have anything else no keep up the good work I'm excited to watch your journey Amanda it's really cool I hope you get that sailboat soon yes thank you thank you you guys will definitely be invited on it we'll do a podcast from the sea (laughs) oh Oh, my gosh yes All right, cool. Well, guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Hope you enjoyed this interview um, with Amanda from Debt Free in Sunny CA. And uh, we'll see you next time. See you, Amanda. Bye. Thank you, guys. If you want to talk more about this episode with Amanda, definitely join our Facebook group at frugalfriendspodcast.com slash group. Uh, We talk about different kinds of ways to save money, Uh, frugality, and a lot of gifts are dropped in that group. So if you want to hang out with us more, definitely join the Frugal Friends community on Facebook. Another way to connect and support us is by leaving us a rating or review on whatever platform you listen to us on. Uh, But we want to read you one of our faves this week from iTunes. This was left by Chelsea Sourman, a good, good friend of mine and who actually pretty much makes it possible for me to be frugal because she's the one that I do batch cooking with and she gives me all of her leftover clothes and we lived with her for a month. So pretty much all of my frugal tips are thanks to Chelsea. But anyhow, she comes at us with great podcast. I love the humor and realness of Jen and Jill as they share tips that are actually useful and easy to start implementing. Thanks J and J for changing the world one wallet at a time. May we all spend less and vacation more. Cheers. Cheers to that. Spend less and vacation more. Yes. (laughs) I hope that comes true for you, Chelsea. Thanks for your awesome review. And I hope that comes true for all of you too. And if you want to save more money so that you can travel more, hit that subscribe button and you'll get a new episode every Frugal Friends Friday. And as always, uh, any links... Uh, to Amanda's stuff or anything we mention is always online in our show notes at frugalfriendspodcast.com. And that'll be all for today. That's it. Go find your why. Pay off your debt. Yeah. Frugal Friends is produced, edited, and mixed by Eric Siriano. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. 
Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. Dive into family tales, explore the human mind, and laugh with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. It's more than a podcast. It's a celebration of the ties that bind us. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up to really like all kinds of different siblings. And it's going to be an awesome season. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.